extra tame. We're having our first neighbor cow freak out from Monty. I can't quite figure out. I hear like the lowing from the other side. for a minute thinking that the cows were on our side of the fence because I didn't realize just how close the fence comes right here on our property line and this has always all been so thick that we don't know exactly where the fence is but I can hear them so close that I'm not surprised that he is I mean I don't know I'm 30 40 feet from him so this could be a problem because <laughs> we, we know he's supposed to be pasture tame, but um, everybody kept saying, oh, you got to be careful with bulls and neighbor cows, and who knows, this could be an issue. So Monty's freak out might have brought me down here and alarmed me a little bit, but one great thing that came out of this emergency trip down to the pasture is that I'm seeing Finley nurse. Um, I don't know if she, oh, I guess that was a pretty quick session, but I am so happy. We've been a little concerned by both, you know, postpartum and the heat and the dryness here, the drought. Um, both of the cows had gotten pretty thin and lilac especially because she's only about eight weeks postpartum. We were nervous because I hadn't seen Finley nurse and she usually did about 7 a.m and could see her nursing throughout the day in the field. Shoot, Quinn is seven months old and he was still like knocking at Lottie's bag like with full force and we felt bad for her. I think he's finally starting to wean himself, but Finley at two months should still be nursing and I, we were just getting really concerned about um, not seeing her nurse and, and Lilac's condition in terms of being thin. So we added hay at the opposite end, um, feeding them cubes every single day. Now um, we were only giving them, you know, pretty good portion a couple of times a week. Now I'm giving them a little bit, well, enough to feed four cows uh, daily. And so we'll keep doing that as long as we have to with um, the drought conditions and just how dry, dried up the grass is getting. I feel for people in the community. I I've heard so many people say that they've sold off their cattle because between the price of hay and um, the lack of rain and forage that they have in their own fields that they're having to make these tough decisions. So um, I'm grateful that we can supply them with hay. I'm grateful that we have pretty good stock of Klein grass here in the pasture. Wrong way, gal. lined up big this small. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Don't be scared. <laughs> Finley's anxious for the day when she can get in on the cattle cube action. These four kind of shove her out and even Quinn has started eating some cubes. So, yep. She's over there hiding out. She was trying to get her head through the gate or through the fence. And then the Chihuahua is down there somewhere hoping that somebody drops a cube. So if we ignore Monty's ruckus over there about the neighbor cows, I was also standing here filming and the bees started swirling around me so I realized that I might be a little too close for their comfort. So I moved over here and thought I'd give you a bee update while I'm here. They're doing okay. They are still there. 
They're not gone, they're not dead, so they're still alive. They're just not thriving like they should be. They should have filled out two more of the frames that Ryan has in there, have honeycomb on them because they work all summer, build the honeycomb, and then they have that in the winter when there's nothing blooming for them to get pollen from. Well, we've had such a tough spring. We're in a drought. We have no wildflowers to speak of, and my garden's not even doing that well. I feel like some days I'm watering the garden just to keep the blossoms open for the bees, <laughs> but we're trying to get this entire ecosystem um, not necessarily flourishing. It's gonna be impossible in a drought year, but to at least keep everything alive. So we've been adding the sugar water. So that little jar that you see at the bottom is for sugar water. When you get a nuke, they're supposed to get a gallon a week and that's just a little pint jar. We'd been trying to fill it a couple of times a week, but I am not really comfortable with the bees. So I'm not gonna be down there pulling it out during the week. So Ryan can only fill it on the weekends when he's here. Well, I got really brave last night. I took it out, I took it up to the house, I refilled the sugar water, I used his bee shirt and got in there and put it back so they at least got some supplemental water. I'm gonna to try to do the same tonight. I do it in the evenings when they're much less active, like almost nighttime, and they're much less active. They're coming and going right now at the end of their day, so I'm definitely not gonna pull that out right now. But trying to get them closer to the gallon a week using that pint jar, so that would be like once a day that we need to fill that jar. What I'd like to do, or you know, have suggested, maybe Ryan can get back in and put this, this supplemental, I can't point <laughs> and film at the same time. So that little black box right there is a frame that it's, it takes the place of one of the frames. I think he took it out because he thought they were going to be filling out frames so quickly that they were gonna need the honeycomb one and not the sugar feeder, but we've discovered that's the opposite. So probably we'll put that one back in. That way I don't have to be changing the bee water daily because it kind of terrifies me. And I'm not allergic to bee stings, I have terrible reactions to wasp stings, but not bee stings. But you know, who wants to knowingly get stung by a bee? And I don't have the bee suit. I guess I could do that and smoke the bees and all that, but that is not my hobby. So <laughs> Ryan can keep up with that hobby. I will help when I can. I'm out here, you know, feeding the cattle cubes every night and um, chicken water and all the other things, even keeping the hummingbirds fed. So I love all of the projects and all of the things that we tend to here on the farm, but um, the bees, not so much. So that's the latest on the bees. We'll keep you posted on what happens with Monty and he sounds calm right now. So I guess the neighbor cows have moved on, but yeah, we hope this doesn't turn into a problem. Stay tuned, subscribe to Part-Time Pastures, like this video and comment with any questions.